Very, very excited to do this super short update video on the Ruger LCP-2. This is the max version, boys and girls. 10 plus one or 12 plus one. It is more of what we love and that is LCP-2 goodness. Oh my gosh, I love the LCP-2. I said as much in my original review, which you can look up. All the specifics are there. This is a max version. More rounds, basically the same gun. This is what it looks like on top. Better sights, same great grip, and we're done. 40 seconds. Yeah, I told you it's gonna be a short update review. Uh, okay, nothing fancy. That's not even funny. I know you're jacking with us. So a 40 second GRV sucks. Just do what you do. Uh, and yes, I have purchased an LCP2 Max already, just like you always say. I just need a validation review that I made the right decision. Go on, I've got popcorn and everything. Please just, you know, not a 40 second GRV. Let's, I don't know, 25 minutes, please. Come on, man. And by the way, I'm a donor. Oh, oh, okay. If you're a donor, then you get it. You're, you're going to get your more or less feature length update on the LCP2 Max. Yeah, donors make the world go around here, bro. Because I do not monetize these videos with BoobTube. They took my ad revenue away many years ago. And they contacted me and they said, Hey, here's a deal we'll make you. If you get rid of all your gun content, we'll restore your monetization on your A channel. And I was like, uh, F you. That's what I told him. I was like, no, I'm not doing that. Well, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Here's a list of videos. If you just, you know, nuke these and, you know, get rid of them, then you could have that. And then you do other things like flashlight reviews and knife reviews and do the other content you want. And I'm like, no, read between the lines. That's what I said. And so it cost me a lot of money. I mean, things were going great when I was being monetized. And ever since then, it's been on the shoulders of TMP donors. You should be one. Anyone can afford six bucks a month. I charge only six creations per month. You can do a dollar per creation. You don't have to put any more limits on it. That's six bucks. And if your financial situation can't handle six bucks a month, I feel sorry for you, bro. I mean, a homeless person can do that. Uh, I really do. I hope your financial situation improves. Uh, I mean, you go out to lunch, you'll spend 25 bucks these days. Easy. All right, and no tier levels either. So I'm stupid. I don't have any tier levels. Any Anybody can like like join and they can have all access, all privileges to the clubhouse. Uh, yeah, so dude, you said you're a donor. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, thank you so much. And uh, so yeah, I'll do a full LCP review for you. Max. Here we go, LCP2 Max review, not in fancy style. And yeah, I may say some of the more uh, ravings that I said about this gun, the LCP2 iteration. Uh, posted a long time ago. I, I don't know how many years, eight years ago or something, whenever the LCP-2 came out. It's been out for a long time. But uh, I'm going to tell you right now, the LCP-2 and the Nut and Fancy Clan is a go-to subcompact, yes, I'll say it, pocket pistol. It is a um, sometimes backup pistol, but what I tell you guys as sheepdogs, civilian sheepdogs, uh, I don't really see a need in rule of law in rule of law a low probability of armed com conflict lpac to have a backup pistol i don't some guys do and that's fine but yeah it could function that philosophy of use and i by the way i'm i guess that's what we're talking about around pou um but people like it as a backup pistol uh this is a primary carry pistol for mrs nothing fancy in fact you see all the lint on it this one is charged and loaded. It is an active weapon system in our family. This is Mrs. Nut and Fancy's LCP2. Those are 90 grain uh, hollow points. I'm trying to remember what brand, I don't remember. Good enough though. The modern 380 loads are pretty darn good. It's coming out of her purse though. Here's her holster that she carries it in. So philosophy of use, it's a good women's gun. I know, I know, I know. We, we want them to carry the Glock 43s, the SIG P365s, the Hellcats, maybe something more. But oftentimes, and Mrs. Nut and Fancy is like this too frequently, they don't want to do that. Even a Glock 43. She does have a Glock 43. She does carry that frequently. But l literally, this is her favorite gun to carry these days, LCP2. 
Because I'll, I'll ask her when we're out. We'll be out and about. And I go, you got your gun, right? Yeah, I'm gear checking my wife. I'm like, you got your gun? And sometimes she goes, no. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, come on. Ugh. Usually she has it, so relax. Usually she does. And then I'll look in a person, it's LCP2. So I'm like, okay, cool. That qualifies. If I gear check you and you have an LCP2, you're still going to pass the weapon check. I will probably give you a mini lecture on how you should carry more than a mouse gun. Okay, a little more than a mouse gun. But yeah, I'll, I'll probably give you a lecture, good natured lecture, and you'll deserve it. But uh, women love the 380. It's easy for them in this form factor, the LCP2, LCP2 Max. You know, round of applause, great choice. Great choice. Better than uh, probably the best backup pistol ever devised, at least in this ca in this caliber, the Beretta 950 Jetfire. Oh my gosh, look at this sucker. It's so outstanding. Yeah, you didn't know that was coming in frame, did you? The Jetfire. Hey, Beretta, pull your head out and start reproducing this pistol. It will sell, even in 25 ACP. This has such a great reputation. I have contributed to that, I think, in some small measure. Uh, well, telling people this is such a great pistol. It's not the fire the firepower in that, well, rounds, if you go against the LCP2, rounds and hitting power of a 380, but it's so small, so tiny, lighter than uh, even this gun. It's a, the 950 Jetfire. Tip up barrel. Oh my gosh, the 950 BS is so fantastic. So easy to load, they don't even have to rock around in it. Great. Uh, Senior citizen pistol and, uh, well, women's pistol if they don't have a lot of hand strength. Uh, back to the LCP2 philosophy of use. Uh, backup pistol, women's pistol, primary pistol for the bedside table. Please no. There's no light rail for it. It's a, it's in a minor power cal caliber. Uh, yeah, 380 is still minor power to me. 9 millimeters is kind of like my general threshold that I try to stick with in most, not all situations. I would say no for home defense. It would not be my first, second, third, fourth choice. No, uh, glove box gun, yeah. Yeah, because if you do an engagement against a communist zombie in this thing, it's gonna be super close range. Yeah, I practice to seven yards in this. Do I shoot past seven? LCP2, uh, once in a while I go to 10, very rarely to 15, but this is a close range gun. So yeah, in that philosophy of use, you betcha, it could be a glove box gun. Uh, here's another one that I really like, a BOK gun. Yeah, you didn't see that coming in this uh, not 42nd GRV, did you? BOK gun. Now the ammo is a, a little bit heavier, maybe a lot heavier than my other recommended calibers like 22 long rifle, 22 magnum, but it's firepower versus mobility. It's still a very small package. The LCP2 Max is only 11 ounces, by the way. And you can have a, a total of 13 rounds with this sucker with a factory supplied magazines. That's pretty good. For a BOK gun, you betcha. I could carry two boxes of ammunition and uh, call it good, and it would just be a defensive weapon. You, you Maybe more ammo if you're going to use it for game getting. But yeah, BOK survival kit gun, day hike survival kit gun, urban survival kit gun. Oh, I haven't thrown down a USK reference forever. Where's my cone? No, fancy. I love how you just tied in USK. I thought you forgot all about that stuff. No, dude. I did not forget about USK. Did not. I love USK. It's just that the concept was so well done by me so many years ago. I don't really know what to say and to add to it. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> Do an update on the USK. Nothing fancy. Maybe it will just be a redo of what I did because I got it right. Urban Survival Kit. That was a fun series of videos. Philosophy of use. One thing I'm going to say, and that you guys are going to love this, on LCP2, I think it's going to lose some sales to a new caliber that's come out. I'm going to do a philosophy video on the new 30 Super Carry. Oh, you didn't see that coming, did you, dude? What? Not fancy. I'm so excited. Uh, the Super Carry, I think, I'm going to call it right here, dudes, in this GRV, it's going to be a runaway success. I might be the first one to ever predict that because I know the carry market, I know gun owners, and they like more rounds. That's why this gun, the LCP2 Max, is going to be a runaway success. Uh, guys just love it. They want more rounds. They want uh, extra magazines. They just do. I know the civilian carry market. Uh, law enforcement types are the same way. They want it. So I think it, in, in that it almost duplicates 9mm ballistics, like extremely close. It's like a skinnier 9mm 
Uh, it, they're going to have some, well, they have guns coming out with it already. Smith & Wesson is the one I shot. Uh, great caliber. It's going to kind of take away some 380 sales there, I'm calling it. But you're not going to have a 30 Super Carry in this. It's too powerful. They need like a 9 millimeter type platform to take the, the pressures of the 30 Super Carry, I believe. But yeah, I'll just throw that in. I think it, it's, it's going to take some sales away from 380s. I think because guys just go ah 30 super carrier 380 it's kind of an odd choice i know because this is such a small gun different caliber that's just my prediction i could be completely wrong could be it happens features on the lcp2 max i'm going to start off with a grip because when i did a review on the lcp2 years ago i i raved about how they just changed the grip from the gen 1 lcp uh iteration and by the way in that video on the original LCP review that I did like in 2008 or so, I did call Ruger out for copying Keltec, the P3AT. Now I said as much, like, yeah, this is just a variation on the P3AT. And Ruger does that frequently. They take another manufacturer's idea, their concept, and they make it their own. And honestly, sometimes they make it better. And that's what they did with the second generation, the pocket pistol, pistol LCP2. And this is the beautiful special edition distributor exclusive i forget which distributor put this one out but it has this sage green slide and the mud colored frame oh my gosh it's so good looking this is again mrs nothing fancy's gun just great looking but in this generation they pretty much got everything right mm, pretty much there's there's one thing they really got wrong and i'm going to show it to you i talked about it in the review but the grip is one of the things they got right so it's that laser stippling they could have been more complete in its coverage. I would like it if the entire grip was covered in that, but they didn't. They did patches on the front strap, on the side, and then they have a raised block on the single stack LCP. And going to the max, we're going to have the same treatment, and yet it's different. <laughs> Where's my cup? No, Fancy, that doesn't make any sense. How can it be the same but different? Well, I don't know. It just is. It just is the same but different. So it's the same texturing, but the, the treatment is a little bit different in that, well, now that it's a double stack tapering down to single to feed in the chamber, you have a thicker grip, but we have that same awesome stippling. And so when I shoot this gun and then I shoot the LCP2 single stack, honestly, I, I don't really tell any difference in ergonomics as far as the practicality of shooting. I can tell this is a skinnier grip. I actually think the LCP2 Max fits my hand better. If it's more hand filling, but uh, they're both comfortable to me. That's my point. It's like, okay, LCP single stack, LCP awesome. double stack, I'm good with it. And by the way, I think your lady I'm friend right. would agree if you're buying it for her. By the way, dude, you say you bought the LCP2 Max already. Did you buy it for yourself or did you buy it for her? I bet you it's bought it awesome. for yourself, and if so, I give you an A plus for that as Buy well. Either way, you're going to get an A plus. Well, hold on, I'm getting carried away here. Not an A plus because you didn't wait for my review. I like it when you guys wait for my review, and then you buy. But sometimes you don't, and as you know, sometimes you get freaking burned, like the what would Stoner do? AR-15 guys didn't wait, and they got freaking burned. Wait for my review if you possibly can. I I have I have a high speed. Uh, flow of content. It's coming. Just be patient. All right. Features. Great job on the grip. I love it. So fantastic. Notice the magazine release is completely different in the LCP2 Max versus LCP2. This is a push button. I did say this one is nice. It raises up just perfectly. It doesn't act, uh, accidentally release like, by the way, the P3AT does if memory serves. I would accidentally release that one. And by the way, the P3AT, I still have and it's in my USK burn yeah i didn't get rid of it still a great pistol i love the p3at it's awesome by Keltec. yeah it's still a great pistol so this has more surface area on it. it is reversible left to right i do believe look in the instruction book it'll tell you how to do that uh, made out of steel not polymer so it's going to be a steel on steel interface with a steel magazine which we'll look at right now here's a 10 rounder which is a lot for a 380 well done ruger i believe this is the 12 rounder both included this has a finger rest on it of course extended a little bit out of the butthole oh excuse me i meant to say the butt yeah i don't know why i said that i just did yeah so these are super high quality made by ruger i don't think they farm these out to anybody i think they make all their own magazines they're mechgar quality good followers 
plastic, easily removable floor plates. They're good, great magazines. Let's put this finger rest extension one in. And that's, you know, that's a fair number of rounds for an 11 ounce pistol. This is an 11 ounce pistol, dude. Empty, of course, but 12 plus one? That's pretty impressive for something that will fit in the, well, more or less, palm of your hand. Let's look at the LCP2 single stack. Same, same basic overall dimension. The slide on this is 0.74 inches is what I measure. And then I measure at the controls 0.85 inches on the LCP2 Max. Again, 11 ounces. Great job on the magazine. I like the magazine release. I don't have any issues with that. Again, I wish the stippling was over the entire surface of the gun. I don't know why they don't do that. Wake up, wake up. All right, so we have a hot gun on the table. We have an empty gun. We're still gonna treat it as it's hot. So we are going to remove the magazine. Safety check, because I'm gonna talk about the trigger. The trigger on this is good. I like the trigger. I don't love it though. It's a little bit surprising. Uh, it doesn't have a magazine disconnect safety, which I like that. Uh, an internal hammer pistol is what this is. So this is not a striker fired pistol, internal hammer. We have the blade safety on the pretty far set, I'm talking forward wise, trigger on the LCP2 Max, just like this one. And I'm pulling it on my scale yesterday at six pounds, three ounces. I might be able to pull it a little bit lighter. Here's the dealio on this, so I think why they didn't give it a super light trigger is because it does go into people's pockets. It is carried in holsters like this. In fact, they do include a non-retention, i.e. there's no uh, you know, strap that goes over to retain the pistol like this Uncle Mike's does. Uh, this is included with your gun. So this is how they're intending it to carry. And I think by, I don't know, making the, the, the pistol trigger just a little bit stiffer, they're going, well, a little extra measure of safety. I guess, I know it has a blade and safety. So uh, I'm trying to defend Ruger here a little bit. You're welcome, Ruger. I'm just trying to defend it. What pound would I like on it? Four, four and a half. For me, being an experienced pistol user, yeah, four and a half. Um, another reason I talked about pocket here, I think also when people come up, now you should have like trigger discipline, right? You're not on your target, so you're on the side like that. But a lot of people that don't have a lot of training will be in the trigger guard and they will have done the take up already. Maybe they're shaking like that and so a lighter trigger will go off quicker. And just go look at uh, accidental discharges with police officers where they've actually killed people doing that. Usually it's a Glock pistol doing it. I know, better training. I know, I'm in agreement, but that might be a re another reason. So I'm gonna get the trigger out of five stars, I'm gonna get a trigger probably 2.5. It's okay. Let's check out the reset. That's a loud twangy plastic sound, isn't it? Kind of a far forward reset. So just like this gun. Now this is loaded, I'm not going to test this trigger, <coughs> but it seems like it pulled better than this one. I could be wrong on that. I wish this was not slanted, it is slanted. We do have some worthless attempt at traction. You should just square it off in this version, Ruger. Uh, there is adequate uh, room inside the trigger guard for a gloved finger, I am demonstrating that right now slightly undercut right here. Again, you're gonna have probably a two finger hold on this with a fingertip extension on the magazine, maybe three, if you have really big hands, which I kind of do. They're large to extra large size. Uh, this is how you're gonna fire it. I've never had a problem with that, never. No pick rail, of course, because it's such a tiny, tiny pistol, tiny, tiny barrel, and not a blowback pistol. This is a barrel cam, so it delays uh, the unlocking a la Browning. Uh, which I like. So really nice shooting, tip up barrel, just like in the LCP2. Quality of the steel is fantastic, of course. Quality of the barrel, uh, the slide, everything is top quality. I mean, it's Ruger. They they don't mess around. They just like, hey, they're gonna give you a lot for their money. This, by the way, goes way back to Bill Ruger. Bill Ruger was that way. It goes back to the Mini 14, like the quality of the Mini 14 to this day. Although it does use investment casting, those investment castings will last forever. The piano wire springs last for a very long time. Uh, you're gonna find the same thing inside your LCP2. Single stack or max, it's just super quality. I've got no complaints at all on that. There's a look at the slide. We got four serrations, rear serrations. Where's my cone? Hey, not fancy. This is exactly the review I was hoping you're gonna do. Thanks, bro. You're welcome, dude. And you're a donor, so you get it. You get it, yeah. 
Uh, same slide that we saw before, really no differences there, except, except. Remember I told you they got something wrong in this? What they got wrong on the regular LCP2 were the fixed metal milled in uh, sights, which as you can see, I have modified to be way more awesome. That's just fingernail polish, bro. So that's white in the back and front is fluorescent orange over white, so it pops. Look at how much better. But non-adjustable, non-driftable, you're stuck with them and if it doesn't shoot point of aim, you just gotta remember that. They fixed it here in the LCP2. This is fantastic. This is a large dot tritium front blade night sight included with your gun. Round of applause for Ruger, listening to people's complaints. And then you have a big U-notch serrated anti-glare metal, not polymer sight that sticks up way better, way more prominently than the LCP2 single stack. Way better sight. Yeah, I do wish they would have just done white in the back, but this is like Vogue. I've been talking about this. This is what people are doing with their guns. They're like, oh, let's give them like a real visible front sight and then we'll just black out the rear sight. That'll go back, trust me. It's gonna go back to white outlines or something in a couple years and they'll go, we don't know what we were thinking when we did that. That's too targety. Uh, now, I'm not a super fan of the U presentation of any pistol. I like a square, square setup, but that's just me. Most guys don't care. And again, the intended distance for this is basically, I'll say it, three yards or less. That's what really what it's intended to. So I don't think most people would uh, use the sights on their LCP2 Max. But do train with it. Do train with it because we have had instances of civilian sheepdogs making some incredible shots where they're illegally carried concealed pistol of choice and uh, you might want to practice at those ranges too. I do think with these sights that you could make uh, um, let's say a zombie hit out to 25 yards with this uh, zombie head hit out to 25 yards you'd have to be pretty good and you'd have to practice and you'd have to well have the mechanics of small pistols shooting really down and by that I mean since this is such a lightweight gun it wiggles around a lot. I've talked about this. It's really easy to throw your shots way, way off. You can be within seven yards and people go, oh, seven yards is easy. No, it's not. You can easily miss a man-sized target at seven yards if you don't know what the hell you're doing. You're wiggling around. These are short, hard to shoot pistols. They need practice. And by the way, you can practice dry firing. Take the magazine out and dry fire this thing all day long point in a safe direction with a safe backstop, especially if you live in high density housing against concrete, lumber, whatever, and then practice. Practice that trigger pull, practice your sight alignment and watch that front sight as you pull that relatively stiff trigger as it comes out of the box and then practice. And you'll be amazed that when you finally shoot that uber expensive, by the way, 380 ammo, uh, that you do pretty darn good. <clears throat> because you did dry fire practice. Here's a look, by the way, inside the magazine well of the LCP2 Max. So I'm gonna give the sights out of five stars, I'll give them four stars. If they were outlined in uh, a contrasting color, maybe, and maybe two tritium dots in the back, I'd give them five. But they're way better than the this these ones right here. There you go. Uh, you have a slide lock right here. I'm not gonna call it a slide release because it's it can function that way, and I do use it that way, but it's so abbreviated, it doesn't stick out that far. Lefties, you may not like uh, that slide uh, stop so much because it's not over here. Big old extractor right here. Right here. Look inside the LCP2. Uh, same stuff, it's just, you know, more LCP2 goodness, like I said, bro. Really nice gun. Really nice gun. Metal recoil rod right here, not plastic. Takes down the same way. No, I'm not going to do take down. I rarely do. Waste time and it's boring. You can go in your manual if you want to learn field strip, bro. Uh, how did it shoot? Well, let me say this. I shot it a fair amount. Way more than I should have. The LCP2 Max. Uh, you've been watching the shooting video as we've been moving along here. Uh, it shot really good, except with Mrs. Nut and Fancy. So she wasn't holding the pistol firmly enough, and so she had multiple stoppages with the LCP2 Max. Yes, I did remind her, hold the pistol firmly. I think that did help, but I'm just passing that on. There were some stoppages with it. However, when yours truly gets a hold of the gun, 100%. Nice. Yeah, and by the way, it may not be 100% her fault because it was new out of the box. She was the first one to shoot it. And thanks, by the way, to Gunnies, the great American gun store for the loaner. Round of applause to Gunnies. Wyatt, specifically at Gunnies. Thank you, Wyatt. Great American Western wear store. 
Where's my Western Wear sign? He hates it when I say that, by the way. He's like, don't call me a Western Wear store. I'm like, dude, you sell cowboy boots, don't you? You sell shit kickers all the time. He goes, yeah. He's like, okay. Well, just, it's okay. I mean, just take it. I don't know where my sign went. Anyways, Gunnies, awesome. Thank you so much. So she shot it first, and it might have been some break-in stuff. I don't know. I made sure the gun was lubed. I shot it 100% thereafter. I super, super enjoy shooting all the LCP2s. I think they are enjoyable. They're not snappy for me. They're not uncontrollable. I think I can hit fairly well with them. For proof pudding, here we go with some paper on the LCP2 Max and Fancy Review. Fiocchi 90 grain jacketed hollow point. This is at six yards standing in the friggin' desert. Golden Saber. Maybe that's those rounds I showed you. So 90 grain golden sabers. Nice. Blazer 90 grain. Look at that group, dude. What? Out of a pocket pistol? That one? Amazing. That one, not so amazing. I mean, dude, if you do that group, I'm going to be congratulating you with a pocket pistol. But for me, I'm like, no, no, no. And there you go. Golden Saber right here. Open it up a little bit. Blazer Brass getting it done. LCP2. I got more paper for you. I could show you all kinds of paper. Conditions on this. I said, Wendy, 90 grain jacket at hollow point. Shoots high left a bit. I can drift that rear sight like I mentioned. Excellent accuracy. Wiggle mark on the trigger. Told you the trigger is not awesome on the LCP2 Max. There's a group. There's a group. Really nice group. Well done, nothing fancy. Thank you. Uh, seven yards. This is in March. Good group. Good group. And the X marks the point of aim on those targets. So I would say the break-in period or the initial stop, just notwithstanding, it shoots fabulously. It is superbly accurate. It's very reliable, very trustworthy. Pocket pistol, backup pistol, whatever POU you're putting it in, would I buy it? Where's my cone? Hell yeah, I'd buy it. This thing rocks. The LCP2 is an LCP2. It has been my standard of measure for 380 pistols for a very long time. I still don't see anyone putting together a better 380 pistol for the money, actually for any price. I just don't see it. It's small, it's tiny, it's ergonomic, it has great features on it. I can deal with the trigger and any other idiosyncrasies it has. It is a top recommendation. And yeah, you might even uh, just go with a Max and carry one magazine instead of uh, like Mrs. Nut Fancy does uh, an extra Mac. This is a nice little carrier, by the way. So the, I bought this carrier. It's like a little magazine carry, carrier. I use it for a G43 too, obviously. This is a brand if you can find it. These are hard to find. I don't even know where they are anymore. I bought this 20 years ago. And then, uh, so here's a LCP2 magazine in there. Oh, I have some F&Js in there. Cool, for more penetration. And like I said in that review, look at how funny that is. Because you feel like, oh, there, that's how the magazine goes in. When if you're just looking at the base plate, now it goes in like that. Like that kind of kind of cocky wampus. And then... Uh, Tactical Doodle filled that in. That's where that coloration comes with. But, I mean, now, this is basically equivalent to the, this gun. You can just take one magazine if you can bear it. Yeah, recommended. Which one would I buy over these two? Um, well, you might say that the LCP Max is a slam dunk over the single stack. I'm not going to say that, though. I, I think that for my my applications of the pistol i still think the single stack works if you have a single stack lcp2 i would never ever sell it i would keep it <clears throat> don't sell it don't sell it by the way no don't do that it's keep it just get an lcp2 max can you ever have too many guns no you cannot you cannot competitive options i showed you that 950 bs and i have this here i don't know why i'm going to show you this how about the uh the pug by north american arms in 22 mag <laughs> what? Nothing fancy. Come on now. That's like a single action revolver. That's a ridiculous competitive option. I know, but I love this gun. And it's awesome. Yeah, it's not as fast shooting, uh, the Pug, but uh, it's very, very tiny. You talk about a pocket pistol. There's a pocket pistol, boys and girls. Look at that. And this is a holster that I carried in. Sometimes I've even net carried this in a Kydex holster. Look at that, dudes. I don't know why I'm throwing that in there. It's funny. By the way, I want to show you some patches from uh, elite donor Antoine Harris. Officer Antoine Harris. He is a member of the Chattanooga Police Department down in Florida. He sent this to me. He is an elite donor. Antoine, what's going on, bro? And then his uh, boss said, hey, why don't you throw in like a Harris County patch too since that's his last name. So there's a Harris County Sheriff's patch. 
there. That's awesome. So again, I tell you guys never to send me anything ever. <laughs> but if you contact me in the Patreon environment and you're a donor, you go, hey, dude, I just got this little something I want to send you. I'll, I'll probably take it. I'll give you my secret, secret mailing address in, in Wyoming. Yeah, so thank you for your service. He's a pro-constitutional, pro-pro-freedom law enforcement officer. We need more of those, by the way. And we are done. Are we done? Hey, dude, at the beginning of the video, did I satisfy, uh, you know, your requirements for a video? Yeah, no, that was awesome. Thanks, dude. I, it really scared me with that 40 second shit you did. No, it wasn't 40 seconds. It's longer. Where are we at? Oh, freak, 30 minutes. Okay, fun gun review. Guns are fun. Watches are fun. Knives are fun. Flashlights are fun. This is a Perrin Mini. Link below. Buy with confidence. My review will come out very soon. It is complete, and these things rule. They have an included headband with them, and they are really one of the best headlamps that I've used so far for the size and weight. This is a Citizen Pro Diver, link below. And talking about small and fast, there's that original Flash One knife that kicked off the Nut and Fancy project all those years ago. Still a fantastic choice, as is the Arrowhead knife, apparently. Whatever. Whatever. This is a Lavashkin LA7 right here and this is the beautiful tri-wing fokker dr1 110 mile an hour it's a couple planes coming out of the aviation museum we're done thanks so much again to the donors thanks to you even if you're not a donor for clicking on the video for your support throughout the years think about being a donor i need you need you need you enough said i got a lot more content coming your way very soon strap in here it comes bye